So we've got a heavy frost this morning. One of the first. We had just a just a hint of it not too long ago, a few weeks ago. But this morning, it's pretty, you know, relatively heavy anyway. So this will turn those leaves loose. So I've got a ton of work to do, that's for sure, and I'm trying to get ahead of the ball a little bit. It won't, it'll be a few days before my friends get here to help me with this, so I'm going to go ahead and get ahead of the game a little bit and remove this, at least, this upper side of sheeting of tin. There is no sheeting on this building. And then just cover it in heavy mill plastic. It'll be every bit as leak-proof as what I've got right now. I can guarantee you that. Now this building is, the trusses are braced on this building, so it's not going to make this building is unstable to remove one side of the roof. Maybe two. I don't know. I've got enough plastic to do the whole thing. But I'm pretty sure I'm just going to do this upper side just to help things move along. So that's the plan. Um, I'm going to start tearing this stuff off. So they had skylights in this building at one time, and I assume that they leaked so bad that they just covered them up with a piece of tin. So I have to be really careful and not step directly on the center of one of these, because this is one of the old skylight. Look how deteriorated that is. It's fiberglass. And I assume that they painted this with some sort of leaking leak-proof paint sealer uh, to keep it from leaking. That didn't work and then they stuck a piece of tin over it and because that tin wasn't laid properly it leaked around it. So these were a big source of my leaks. There's eight of these on the roof. Well, the nails wouldn't hold much with it. You can do it. Relax. I can! 
Get the camera off. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Thank you, love. So I assume whoever owned this building had given up on it, really, because when I you know, when I come up here, I'm the one that put all these oversized screws in the roof, which definitely helped. I did it on this side because this side was uh, leaked the worst. But when I got here, this place was just pouring on the inside. It was literally an abandoned building, you know, for a good reason, I guess. But I'm just glad to be able to have an opportunity to fix it. Huh, they used automotive bondo to try to seal that. It would have been more appropriate to use some fiberglass and some resin. And they used silicone. So it looks like the slats on this building are three quarters of an inch thick, just pine. And, you know, they're starting to split pretty bad. Really, I think if you're going to use wood like that, it wouldn't hurt to go a little thicker. I don't know. Just think it may not split as bad. I don't know how your world works, but I know how mine does, at least a large portion of the people I know. And that is, the rules are, if you open up a roof, it starts raining, at least very soon afterwards anyway. It's kind of like, kind of like the big tarp on the other side of the building when I was doing all that work. You raise the tarp, it starts to rain. Put the tarp down, the rain stops. Definitely don't want to touch those wires. Probably give you a slight tickle, I'm sure. That's probably all you'd feel anyway. Until your body hit the ground smoking. That's it. So this is my 40th birthday present and my 18th wedding anniversary present for my wife. Oh my. Ah. 
little cake. Pictures of me and my lovely wife. Me being silly. And an old picture of us. That's neat. I like that. And some butterflies. They're rubber band powered. I like that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Happy birthday. I just want my electrical tape all the way down to the creek. So it kind of resembles a greenhouse in here. It's the next morning, all the tin's off. I'm about to go pull those slats off, the piece that run lengthwise of the building that the tin was uh, mounted to. I'm gonna start pulling that off. I gotta, for obviously, I gotta first pull back this plastic because it looks like it's gonna rain outside. Obviously it would. Um, and maybe even start putting down some sheeting. You know, usually a roofing crew will have four to seven guys. And that's the only way you're gonna get any real fast movement on a roof. But, you know, just me right now, so. I'm going to do all I can and see how far I can get. So hopefully the rain's over for a little bit. I'm sure it's not, but hopefully. I'm about to lay out for my first sheet of plywood, which is really the most important thing, right? Because every piece of plywood will be based off of where you lay it. And if you lay that first piece crooked, you're going to have some problems. Well, I've got a major problem. Now, I've laid a few sheets up here and it quickly become evident what the problem is. They don't have their truss layout right. And there's lots of reasons why they did it wrong and we could go into that, but your trusses should be on two foot centers. If you're setting plywood, the end of your plywood needs to end on the center of one of these trusses. That way you can Start back off with your next piece of ply, you know, and your ends have somewhere to, to nail to. They put tin on this roof, so it didn't make any difference because the tin nails to the slats, the long wood boards. It doesn't really nail to the trusses, not directly. But if you're doing plywood, now it directly nails to the trusses and is dependent on where your trusses are. Basically, they didn't lay out from what I can tell, they didn't lay out their truss layout on the seal plate, do that on the other side, and then set their trusses down. What they did is they set a truss, they pulled from it, and they didn't pull from the same spot every time. They pulled from the last truss they set, which compounded their errors throughout the building. I laugh, but it's not funny because it adds so much extra work. It's unreal. I mean, my options are to pull off the rest of this roof, pull up some of these trusses, reset them, you know, which actually maybe as easy as trying to 
nail boards, two by fours to the sides of trusses and cut sheets. I mean, you know, 12 or whatever, six half dozen. That's what they say. One way or another, there's a lot of work going to be involved in sheeting this roof. What do you do other than fix it, right? Complaining about it doesn't make it better. So there was a lot of head scratching involved in figuring out a way that I could lay this plywood out because some of the trusses are not really that bad. In a way that I could lay it out with minimizing the waste. So I sat down, pencil and paper, marked my trusses with orange paint on top that were, you know, the farthest off. Figured out a way to avoid those. And this side actually went pretty smooth. I still had to nail some two befores to the sides of the truss and cut some ends, but all in all, it really wasn't that bad. So here I'm cutting the end of a sheet off, probably an inch and a half, slightly more than what a two before laid on the side of the truss would make up. You know, just a good example of what you would have to do if your you know, sheeting doesn't line up to the end of the truss, because if it doesn't, the piece that butts up to this one would be floating in the breeze on the end, which you don't want. So, had to do this to a few, but all in all, not too big a deal, really. So here was a pretty badly damaged truss tail. I hit it with the forks on the bobcat, loading up a uh, piece of uh, ply. But look at that, no wonder it broke. Insects had cored that out. There's four big core holes there. You look where they went in, the insects. They just chew a small hole inside. But look at what they bored. So that's ominous, right? So what I'm doing is staggering my joints at the ends of my plywood. As you can see, this joint here comes to the middle of this sheet and then down at the bottom, you know, we got another joint. It's just for sheer strength. I'm also nailing about every six inches on the ends, and then probably about every eight inches uh, in, the middle, so in the middle of the sheets. It's working out pretty well and going a lot faster than what I thought it would. But, you know, the truss layout's a problem. You know, it's, it's slowing me down. But I really do believe that somebody that was really good at this could sheet this entire roof by themselves in a day, you know, even doing it the way that I'm doing, lifting my sheets up with the, uh, with the Bobcat, I really do believe that somebody that was good at this could do this roof in, in one day. So this is not a very steep roof. It's pretty easy to work on, actually. And man, it's days like this that, you know, make you happy to be alive, right? Such a beautiful, beautiful day. Weather's perfect. It's not always like that here, but, you know, I guess you take the good with the bad, right? Yeah, checking it out. Yeah. 
Man, it's a nice day. So I was glad that my dad showed up to help. This side of the roof, not near as easy as the other side. Some of the truss, well one in particular was off over four inches. You could just see it by eye that it was wrong and what they were thinking when they set these truss, I don't know. But between me and him we figured out a way to eliminate as much waste as we could. Nailed some two by fours to the sides of trusses, cut a couple sheets a little I don't know, shorter than they would have been otherwise. But it all worked out and me and him were able to get this side done other than one row and you know, then we'll be on to the membrane, drip edge, starter shingles and then shingles. So making good progress. Definitely glad to have him around to help. That's for sure. So that's how many nails I've pulled, nails and screws, in the last couple days. That's quite a few. I emptied my tool belt probably 20 times because it gets so heavy, loaded down. Tried to keep them all, you know, in control of all of them so they don't end up all over the ground and give me flats on everything I own. But quite a few, right? There'll be even more in the shingled roof. So I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it's pouring rain outside, which is... I wouldn't expect anything less, right? You pull the roof off, it's not a bad idea to invest in a couple massive tarps because you can guarantee that it's going to rain. No matter what the forecast says, it's going to rain. Which I'm glad that I was prepared for. One more row of sheeting and this thing will be done, which as far as sheeting anyway, then it's on to the membrane and the shingles. And it's twice as quiet or more in here just with the sheeting on than it was with the tin tin roof you couldn't hear yourself thinking here when it rained so it's going to be really nice it'll just get better as soon as the membrane and the shingles are on it'll get even quieter which is going to be great so that's it i think at least for this week anyway i'm wore out so thanks for watching guys send me an email if you need anything click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel thanks to my viewers patrons and subscribers 
you guys are the reasons I can do this, and I definitely appreciate it. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.